All right, and we are live. All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Purple Creator Show. This is episode two. I'll be your co-host for this episode. You can call me the pug. With me is Andre Costa, the CEO and founder of Purple Creator. Andre, anything you want to say? Hi, everyone. Nice to see. Nice to to um, to have you as well, pug. Yeah, and. To, to add on today, like I mentioned, is the second episode of the Purple Creator Show. Um, we started last week, and for those that missed our show, we we had a great start. Um, we touched upon some great social tokens, such as PSG, Cult, and Tilt. Um, we also had a bankless DAO contributor and Web3 advisor, Shara Mehta, as our featured guest. Uh, he... It was a great uh, experience. He came, provided some awesome insight. And if you missed it, you can go check out the web, uh, the highlights on our website and on YouTube. Uh, for this week, we're going to touch upon some new social tokens, particularly those in sports, which Andre is going to go more into depth about them. But we will, we're also going to be bringing into our show another guest. Her name is Gemini uh, Rising. She is a digital video and crypto artist. She also has a DAO that is she, she's starting up. Um, we're excited to bring her on board in the, in the next couple of minutes. Um, it's going to be a great conversation. But for now, I'll give it to Andre, and he'll touch upon some of the social tokens of the week. Andre, take it away. Awesome. Uh, thanks, uh, Giovanni. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about five tokens related to sports. Um, and the first three tokens are uh, tokens that were issued by Chilis. They are one of the leaders in the category of sports as they launched more than 50 tokens from several sport clubs. Uh, but first, let me tell you what you can do with these tokens. Each club delivers a specific reward and experience. From visiting the player area in the stadium, allow you to watch from a VIP zone and get discounts, chat, voting rights, gaming, and many more utilities. Uh, the first one token is City. City is the official fund token of Manchester City a professional soccer team. They compete in the Premier League, the top flight in English football. And they were the winners in 21-22 season. They are one of the six most valuable clubs estimated in $4.7 billion. Such impressive to see this uh, type of uh, sport clubs moving into social tokens. The second is PFL, the official fan token of professional fighters leagues, the first US organization to launch a token with Chilis in socios.com. Then we have Dave's, the official fan token of Dave's Cup, often described it as the World Cup of Tennis. So uh, the following tokens that I'm going to talk uh, as token, social tokens of the week uh, were not issued by Chilis. Uh, the following one was issued by Rally, which is another major platform. So it's RAP, our fourth uh, token. RAPS is a community token for an independent news media company called Raptors Republic. They cover the NBA basketball team, the Toronto Raptors, and the Canadian basketball. If you are a token holder, you can have access to exclusive tokens, exclusive in-person event, and community members can get rewards for their support and engagement with the community. Finally, uh, we are going to talk ab about Kraus. Uh, their goal is to own a professional basketball sport team. Such bold goal. Interesting facts about them. 
According to its website, the token has raised more than a million dollars in Ethereum from its NFTs sales. And it's currently in the second phase of its roadmap, which is building credibility for the DAO vision. In May of this year, the community agreed to purchase 25 party tier edition of a big three team receiving ownership like value and utility. Additionally, they recently purchased an NFT from Rumble Kong League Club that will grant team ownership in the first metaverse league. In the real life utility, they are also making some progress. In the last conference of NFT NYC, they led the sports and NFT section uh, with a basketball tournament. If you are a token holder, you can be allowed to vote on proposals and help to decide the future of this DAO. Again, this is not investment advice. Make your own judgment and research uh, if you want to purchase any of those uh, tokens. Awesome. Thanks, Andre, for uh, touching upon some of those social tokens. There's a, there's a couple, I mean, particularly in sports, it's very interesting to see what, how a lot of these sports teams are entering into the space. Um, I still think U.S. in terms of the United States, is it's, it's a little hard for us to get access to these fan tokens. But you're, start, you're seeing it from in other countries, these uh, fan tokens, these sports tokens are allowing people to engage with their with the with the sports teams. So I'm curious though and your thoughts how do you see the next couple of years and the progress within fan tokens in particular? Yeah, uh that's a very good question uh Giovanni. Uh the way that we see like um let me give you an example um the NBA top shot NFTs, like they got a massive attention uh, from media, uh, a lot of trading volume. And like many projects, like they start as an NFT, like uh, ApeCoin as well. Um, but the point is, uh, at some point, it's most likely that they're going to have a fungible token. Uh, and the reason is because uh, with uh, social token, because social token is a fungible token, uh, the set of possibility is just bigger. It's not just about creating the community, but a social token helps the brand or the community to manage themselves, increase engagement and to grow. Let me touch on each of those points. So for instance, uh, about manage uh, the community. Uh, with the social token, you can have vote rights. So um, all fans, they love being able to participate in any function or decision of their favorite teams. So it's a very interesting uh, uh, new possibility that we have now. Uh, the other is about engagement. It's about a closer association with the team or the club. Uh, there is also some monetary reward because you can get discount, exclusive reward. Uh, think this as a loyalty system. It's like a platinum membership card. That And those kind of perks are uh, like... Fans, supporters, they love uh, to 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 be close with with this this kind of uh, uh, system. And finally, the other point is uh, uh, to grow. Grow. It's because now it's in a way to remain connected with fans from many geographical, in a much more easier way than uh, maybe flying to watch uh, a football. Uh, so you can still uh, be a, a super fan, but in a different way. So the way that uh, we see is that social token value 
Uh, I think we have discussed it uh, previously in the last episode, but social token value, they are divided into utilities and reputation. If you give utilities and if the community of or the brand, they have a strong reputation, it's most likely that the social token value, it's going to increase. So what happens is that now with those uh, sport clubs like uh, as city manchester city uh between like the top 10 uh soccer uh teams in the world in terms of valuation joining we do have the reputation that is needed and now like the future and to see this um category growing we expect to see more utilities, which is about what you can do with these tokens. That's what is going to make this space even more, uh, much more stronger than we 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 see to, today. And I and I agree with you. Uh, there is some limitations in, in U.S., uh, especially because of uh, the regulatory environment. But it's also uh, uh, around education, understanding, and um, I think it's 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 uh, uh, there are many brands that are doing progress into this uh, space as well. Awesome points, Andre. Um, a lot to digest from that. I, I mean, the, the big takeaway is what better way to introduce social tokens to them to, to let me rephrase it what better way to introduce social tokens than to one of the biggest entertainments out there which is sports right it's a great way to get involved and it, i think right now it's a great way for people to get their feet wet and in particular and and i apologize to the project if i pronounce it wrong kraus they are doing something that i think everyone should check out in in the sports in the sports world um, because what they're doing is pretty remarkable. They're a DAO and they're showing you the power of the DAO. And we touched upon this on the last episode, what a DAO and, and, and what the future is for DAOs and what they're capable of doing. But in, in just, I don't, I think it's only maybe a year and a half. They've, they've made their mark in the, in buying a big three sports team. They bought a metaverse team and they're also providing real life utility. That is something that like Sharab was mentioning in, in such a small time frame. Look what a DAO can do. Um, but let, let I we have our, our guest here as much as I would like to continue on. We, we should get our guest in and. But Andre, once again, thanks for uh, touching on social tokens. Let's bring in uh, our guest, Gemini Rising. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Great. Great. Uh, Great. Thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for asking me to come. <laughs> yeah. So for our audience out there, why don't you give us an introduction of who you are and what you do? Okay. Um, my name is Gemini Rising. I am an artist. I went to art school in Toronto, Ontario College of Art and Design. Um, way back in the early 80s, I did mostly uh, video art. I also did performance and installations and things like that. But most of my work was video art. Um, my art got shown all over the world, um, but I never got to go with it. Uh, I got paid 50 Canadian dollars every time it got shown. Um, but it was shown in a lot of festivals and stuff in the UK as well. Uh, and, um, you know, living off of grants in Canada is not very easy. So I, I, I had been editing for a a while already and I was one of the only people that uh, knew how to do nonlinear editing which um, there was no such thing when I started it was uh, I actually started when it was reel to reel and then uh, beta uh, the big beta cassette tapes and stuff like that but anyway um, I got a job as an editor in a documentary film company 
And then I started uh, working for them as a director. Um, some of the, one of the films I worked on as an editor won an Emmy and um, the other film I worked on uh, got nominated for three Geminis, which is the Canadian equivalent of the Emmys. Um, it, basically I, you know, worked in, in, in documentaries because, um, well, it was better paying than being an artist. And it was also a good way to learn about things and meet new people and stuff like that. Um, uh, and I always sort of like did my art as part of everything else that I did. Uh, in 2017, my son uh, told me about Bitcoin and I bought some. Uh, during the all-time high in, in December. And, uh, you know, but I, I started, you know, learning about it and stuff like that. And I really liked uh, the idea of being in control of my own things and not, you know, having the bank and people, the middleman and all that kind of stuff. So in 2019, my son told me about NFTs. He said, oh, you should really check this out. Uh, like, you know, you haven't done any art for a while. So I started, um, you know, looking into NFTs and I started making my own NFTs. I started on Rarible and then I got accepted into Ephemera and Known Origin and Async Art. Um, so I was doing that and I had already um, read about another platform uh, protocol called Near. I really liked um uh, their white paper, it was really interesting. And I liked the fact that, you know, it was low energy. I liked the idea that they were trying to build a community. They were building a community of artists. Um, and then they started making DAOs. And uh, I uh, somehow in January got, like I had been minting stuff on Near uh, through a platform called Mintbase. Uh, they used to be on Ethereum and they moved everything over to Near. Um, what I liked about it is the fact that to mint stuff was extremely cheap compared to Ethereum. Uh, I, I, one piece I minted on Ethereum cost me over a hundred dollars just, just to mint it. So um, the cost was a lot lower and I liked that. But anyway, in January, I ended up um, being on the council for a DAO called Ina DAO. Um, these DAOs are all in on the near protocol. Um, one of the problems that I've found is that other DAOs that are on other protocols, every time you had to vote and make a decision, it costs like quite a lot of money. Whereas in near, if you vote on something or you, you know, you make a proposal or whatever, it's like one cent uh, instead of like $10 or whatever it would have been on Ethereum. So um, yeah, and I really, uh, the DAO that I um, started working on uh, was called Ina Dao, which is a Dao for uh, female artists and uh, artists who identify as being female. And we just started doing a lot of stuff, um, having a lot of uh, shows. We built a gallery in Crypto Voxels as well as on Near Hub, which is a um, metaverse on the Near platform. And um, we've been going since January. And then in May, I started in my own Dao called the LP Dao. So uh, live performance now. So yeah, that's basically a short history. <laughs> oh wow! You know, it's uh, thank you for thank you for that. There's a lot to digest. Um, first off, congratulations on all the artistic achievements you've you've been achieving so far. Um, hopefully, there's many more down the line. Um, there's a lot. Um, uh, there there is a lot to digest and. I know I have a couple questions that I, I want to talk about, but Andre, before we, Andre, if there's anything you want to ask before I start asking anything, or you want to touch upon anything. No, actually, I just want to say hi uh, to Krista. It was so nice to speak to you uh, a few time ago. Uh, and I just want to, to say um, that for those that are uh, going to listen to this video or are currently listening, um, I, something that I really love it uh, when I speak with you was kind of like your passion about helping the, the artists. 
It's about um, the way that this industry, the crypto, blockchain, DAOs are helping uh, artists from many places uh, in the world to get funded and to make a living so they can focus on their passion, they can focus on their art. So it was really inspiring uh, when we, we discussed it. So I, I would like more to hear from you, like um, the benefits, like how, how do you see um, this, um, this industry impacting the, 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 the whole ecosystem of artists or any other benefit uh, that you think that are very interesting? Feel free to, uh, to bring it up. Um, okay, well, um, I, my son and I uh, are working on a documentary called I Want My NFT. We interviewed a lot of the OG artists, the ones OG meaning the ones that started in like 2018. Um, people like Coldy, Matt Kane, um, Giselle X, uh, Sparrow, Bart Ionson. Um, Anyway, we interviewed a lot of people and they already, like they had been making this art when Ethereum was quite low. And basically, you know, they grew this community and they um, bought each other's art and stuff like that. But because they were the OGs, they were the ones that were, you know, when things started going up a lot, like Matt Kane um, is an amazing artist. Uh, uh, they're quite well known. I mean, uh, most people who know anything about uh, NFTs and NFT artists would know the names Coldy, uh, Angie Taylor, Matt Cain, uh, Josie Bellini. Um, there, but so they had already found their place uh, on their own and and just helping each other out. So I guess one of the great things is. The community that's happening um, for newer I mean there are so many artists that have come into this space and it's you know it's pretty hard uh, to actually get a foothold nowadays just because there are some and and you know there's a lot of really really good art uh, I'm just so impressed um, but I would say the main thing in terms of artists is there's a really great community, uh, a community of people who support one another. Um, but for newer artists, it's harder. And one of the things um, regarding the near ecosystem is that they fund a lot of art projects. So they actually have a near fund where most of the money and you know they're spending like it, i think i heard that like over one month they spend about six million dollars um funding projects funding artists and ina dow which i'm still involved in um gets funded you know we create proposals and we get funding every month and then what we do is we create um shows we have themes and things like that where new artists and and basically can um make a piece of art and submit it and mint it and it will get shown in our gallery it doesn't matter if you're a nobody or like everybody has an equal opportunity and i find that in the near ecosystem there are a lot of artists from um developing countries like um Brazil and uh, Venezuela, um, the Philippines. I mean, they're not all developing countries, but you know what I mean? Like like ones where you don't see uh, a lot of art. Um, you know, in Canada, for example, uh, our government funds um, artists uh, so that they can kind of eke out a living. Um, but in a lot of countries, that doesn't happen. And what I really like about the NERA ecosystem is that they are... <coughs> in a lot of money uh, to 
<coughs> excuse me, to uh, help artists sort of get a foothold, especially artists from developing countries. And I think that's a really amazing thing uh, to have happen that, that I, I've never, I haven't seen it in the Ethereum, uh, like Ethereum is, um, you know, like I said, there's the OGs and they're, they've got a strong foothold. Um, there's the OG galleries, like super rare, known origin. Um, they've got a um, maker's place. They've got a really strong foothold, but they're not funding um, new artists, which is what I really like about the near ecosystem is that they're really supporting and, and creating a community. And that's not necessarily of like well-known um, Western artists. Um, Afri there's a lot of African artists as well. Um, my son is very involved in the music scene and there's a lot of um, musicians from Nigeria. So he's doing a lot. Um, and the near ecosystem is also doing a lot. So um, I'm really uh, amazed at how much support because, you know, usually in, uh, in real life, artists are like sort of at the bottom of the totem pole. You know, you got your, your money movers, you know, like the hedge fund people and lawyers and doctors and engineers and artists are like down there. So it's nice to see. I mean, I personally believe that artists should be at the top of the totem pole because they're kind of the ones that lead the way. Um, but that doesn't happen in, in this world. So I really like that with Nier. Yeah, I mean, you, you touched it on how artists are viewed, unfortunately. <laughs> um, as a creative, it's definitely, myself, it's, you, it's definitely hard. Um, and the amount of work, and you know it, it it's, it's a lot. You put in a lot of work and you don't know if necessarily that work is going to be seen. It's going to get recognized. Um, and it's unfortunate because there's a, that's not to say other jobs are, you know, there's a lot of jobs that require work, but there's some jobs that you look and you're like, how, you know, they're getting paid all this money and I'm putting my soul into this. And that's, that's a, that's a whole other topic of discussion in terms of uh, valuing what the, what the economy should value and not. But one of the things that I wanted to, what you brought up was is your experience in crypto and, and as an artist, all these different communities. And one of the questions that a lot of people ask is as an artist, how do you get started? And, and cause it's so big, you know, I, I know a couple of people that, and they're actually, they asked me to ask you is there's, especially on Twitter, there's so many different communities they, they get, they, they hear NFTs, they hear Web3 and they, they're like, I don't, I, I can't, I don't want to know. It's too much. It's too late. And that's not the case. We're actually in the very beginning. So that's why I want to ask, uh, ask you, Krista, is how does an artist get started in this space? And if you could give, if you can give an example of how you did so. Well, uh, how I did so uh i'm really bad at pro promoting myself and you know like there's i'm really bad at twitter uh <laughs> but uh what i do like i said i make documentary films and the way that i got to meet all these people was i made a film about them but that's just me i'm i'm not a very extroverted person i'm usually the person that asks the questions and is behind the camera, not in front of the camera. Um, so I think the main thing is, uh, is just try to find, I know this sounds really kind of hokey, but uh, find your tribe, um, find the people that you, um, you know, other artists you like, uh, engage with them, uh, on Twitter is where most people are. Um, there are, like what I said about the near ecosystem is that it's pretty easy to uh, get in and do stuff, even if you are not known, 
or you're young and your stuff is very raw or whatever. I mean, you have to just keep making and making and making. Uh, one of the things I think um, most artists identify with um, is that you can't help not making stuff. Like you're, even if you're not good at selling your stuff, uh, like me, uh, making it is really easy. Like if I couldn't make something, I don't know what I would do. But really, you need to have a community. You need to engage with other people. Uh, you know, like you can't just like a post or, you know, or retweet a post. You have to start talking to people. And like I said, with me, I, I just, <laughs> we just made this documentary and I interviewed them all. So um, I know them uh, now uh, through that. But, you know, there are different ways, like, uh, on Twitter, you just start engaging. Uh, I mean, everybody's human, like even the really good artists are still, um, you know, people don't actually say it enough that something is good, that they like it. Um, I've had that so many times, you know, if I say something to somebody, oh, I really like your work and they're, oh, thank you so much. I, I never know because no one ever tells me or whatever. People just don't do that. Uh, and I mean, I don't think you should be insincere about it. Like, you, you know, uh, I guess some people are, but uh, if you really like something and you like what that person is doing, tell them. Um, they're all on Twitter. Um, just let them know. Uh, if you're new and you feel unsure, uh, I welcome people onto the near ecosystem. If you're a female, um, or identifying as female, you can join our DAO and make art and it will get shown. Uh, it doesn't matter. It will get shown. Uh, we have proposals every month. Uh, so anybody who's welcome, who's a female, female identifying, um, but there are a lot of other DAOs out there. Um, there are a lot of artistic DAOs. All you need to do is, uh, go to near.org and, and, um, you know, I can leave you some links. Uh, I don't know if you want um, them later or now or whenever, but uh, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, gov.near.org is where you will find a lot of the proposals for creatives. So just keep making stuff, um, engage with other people, find your tribe, uh, and don't be shy. I guess that's my advice. Great advice. Um, um, in terms of the links, we'll be, I'll be sure to reach out and we'll get them after. Um, Andre, is there anything you wanted to touch upon on that before I ask a, a specific question? Because there's a lot to digest from all of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, like NFT is one of the most uh, like uh, famous word uh that became famous last year so but DAOs is still an, and also social tokens are still not a term that most people knows about so how was this movement from okay nfts to actually uh creating a DAO to participate in a DAO like how do you see DAOs changing the game compared to NFTs? Um, well, I can't speak for any other DAO except for the ones on the NEAR protocol, which is what I'm on. Um, they are creating, the, the DAOs on NEAR protocol are creating a lot of opportunities um, for new people for people from developing countries that haven't had any access or aren't supported um, by their country as an artist. Uh, so that is the one really good thing about a DAO. Um, obviously in any community, there are always good things and negative things. I mean, you know, if you're from a big family or if you're from a community or if you've ever been in a co-op like I have, you're always gonna have um, you know, run-ins with people or like there's, you know, all different kinds of personalities. 
um, that you have to deal with, but it's, it's really good um, to help, like, to make you feel valued, uh, to have other people that um, value you. Um, and the more people um, that value you and the more people you value, um, the stronger you get and the stronger the other people around you get because you're supporting one another. And I think that's the main, for me, um, that's the main uh, uh, thing that I like about DAOs is that sense of community and that sense of support. Yeah, no, that that's, um, it's uh, some good points in terms of the community aspect of the DAO and how it, I, I've been noticing, and, and we just talked, Andre and I just talk, talked about this earlier, and, and Shara on the last episode, the power of a strong DAO, what it can do in, say, two years. Um, it's, it, it's arguably more efficient than some of the companies out there in, in just two years and then you're but you have to have a strong DAO, and then that's the whole thing is how many strong DAOs are out there it's still being figured out but in terms of a good use of a good um example of the DAOs, and and Shira mentioned bankless DAO. i even think gcr which is the global investment research DAO. i, I think that's what it's called that's another good example of a well-structured DAO. um but to add to your point, before I go into, uh, we're going to talk about your DAO and what you you're creating. Let's take it back and talk about let's let's go back to the artists and creatives. Do you do you think social tokens can help creatives? Um, and I'm just curious about your thoughts on social tokens and and how it plays a part in this ecosystem, particularly with creators and artists. Um, I am even though we actually have a social token for I want my NFT, which is the name of our documentary, I am not that uh, familiar. I know um, uh, people like Connie Digital has a social token. I know a lot of people who have social tokens. Like our, our token uh, is uh, also based on Ethereum. Um, I think if you already are a well-known artist, and that's not just, you know, uh, artists that have been in the NFT space, but musicians and uh, actors, the, uh, the social media uh, influencers, uh, if they already have a long, large following, you can create those social tokens as a reward to your fans. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't know um, enough about social tokens to go into much more detail than that. But I think um, if you are, are already um, somebody who has a following and somebody who has a lot of fans, uh, I, th I think a social token is a, is a good way to reward your followers. I personally don't have, <laughs> I don't think I, my social tokens would go anywhere, but you know, maybe one day when I'm famous, uh, ha ha, uh, that might be different, but um, I think for for a lot of people who are, like I said, influencers and who have large followings, social tokens is a really good way to to reward your fans. Andre, I feel like you got some. You this is a great topic of discussion. Um, if there's anything you want to talk about on this topic with social tokens and creators, do you completely agree that social tokens are particularly limited to big influencers, artists with big followings? Um, curious to hear your thoughts on, on, on Krista's answer. Yeah, I, I think um, what we have to think is the definition that we are talking about. Like, uh, most of creator coins that we see today, uh, they are based on a token bound curve. 
So um, basically, if you um, buy a specific quantity of tokens or a lot of people buy a specific quantity of tokens, uh, the price is going to be defined by that supply. So it's not like an order book model exchange where you can sell and, and buy tokens for each price. The problem with uh, this way of uh, looking to that, uh, I'm, I'm trying to answer without going into too much details, but the problem with the creator coins going through a token bound curve is that um, if you already have a big community, uh, what happens is that only the early uh, adopters are the ones that are going to really uh, be able to be reward from that. So uh, it may not be may the best model. Um, so for instance, uh, tokens that are non bound curve or maybe you could have a bound curve but it's very uh uh limited uh especially during the 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 first sale usually this is uh, uh the most recommended way for like big artists or big brands so the point is um we do believe that creators like Jess Bieber or uh, several others, uh, Kane. We actually had an article about Kane. Uh, maybe you can uh, post uh, as well, uh, uh, Giovanni, uh, where we, we see a future where all of those creators are going to be having the social tokens. So it's not maybe around whether uh, it's a fit or it's not a fit. It's more like, because the blockchain, the social token, they're very flexible. Like you can define the rules. There are a lot of ways of building that. So it's more like how you set the stage, how you configure your community versus uh, whether it's going to work or not for that particular community. That's how we see. And usually creator coins, they are not uh, seen as good for big communities because of bound curve uh, limitations. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks for that response. Um, Krista, is there anything you want to you want to comment on that? Um, I'd actually like to ask Andre what uh, bound curve means because I don't know. That's a good question. A lot of creatives, even myself, I, I was a little unfamiliar with that term. Absolutely. Uh, happy to, to explain that. Um, by the way, like, yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, many um, in the audience uh, also uh, probably uh, don't, are not very familiar to that term. So bound curve, uh, imagine that there is a formula where you define the price. So in, let me make a comparison with stocks, okay, stock price. So basically, you have like one stock of Facebook, and if somebody and somebody can sell or buy for or can put a order to sell or buy on any price. Maybe you could be crazy. I have bought a, a, a Facebook uh, stock for a hundred dollars, and I can sell for uh, twenty or I can buy for uh, a much uh, cheaper, I can try to buy at least, okay? I can put out, it's like Bitcoin. You can put the price that you want. You have freedom. So the point is, uh, this is non-bound curve tokens. So the token is not limited to any bound curve, any formula that defines the price. But, 
if the token uh, has a bound curve, imagine that uh, happens something like that. You mint a token. And now you have maybe just one coin or two coin. And you buy that token. If you buy those two coins, the algorithm, they're going to create two more coins. Now your supply is four, uh, four coins. And then somebody buys the other two coins. And now the total supply is going to increase to eight uh, uh, coins and so on and so forth. And every time that the supply is increased, the price is also increased. So if the coin started, I don't know, $1, uh, you bought for $1, then the price of the, those two coins now are maybe $2. So there is a curve, there is a formula that defines that price based on the supply. So why uh, people built that system? Uh, the reason is because um, there are many tokens that do not provide much liquidity. So because let's say a creator that has a much uh, limited number of followers or a very small community, most likely that that creator are going to start with very few amount, a uh, uh, very few amount of token holders, maybe two or three token holders. So with that, what happens is uh, uh, that it's hard to have liquidity because of that limitation. So that's why they created this bound curve. So it's much easier to buy and sell without a liquidity pool, without uh, a lot of people owning that token. It's basically bought and sold uh, in an algorithm way. Hope it answered uh, the the question we can hear you uh you are on mute um, i said great great uh great answer and this is the type of education we need particularly on social tokens and and creators um we're gonna need to find a way to 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 educate them on these types of terms and this is the type of discussions that that help now let's let's take let's switch gears Let's talk about your your DAO and the vision for the DAO and everything that's been happening so far because it, it's a, it's a very interesting DAO DAO and we want to make sure we give you the time to talk about it. Okay, so like I said before, uh, I started um, in DAOs on the Near Protocol with the Ina DAO. Uh, it's basically being a practice. And I think for everybody, everybody in this whole ecosystem is new. Uh, we're all learning as we go along. Um, sometimes we make quite a lot of mistakes, which uh, I have myself, uh, along with, you know, people in our DAO, like how, how things work, how we vote on things and stuff like that. So um, for me, um, working with the Ina Dow has been a great learning experience, and I really like the people that I'm working with, and um, I really like what we're doing. Uh, and one of the people that I'm actually it was a, a a girl who's now one of the council members uh, for uh, this Dow that I created called. LP DAO, which is live performers or live performance DAO. Um, uh, she interviewed me. She's from the near ecosystem. We got along really well. She's a live performer. And we started talking. I started talking to her about my experience in Second Life. So uh, before I tell you about more in detail about this DAO, I was in um, a metaverse called Second Life which um, probably a lot of people have heard about. It um, has a reputation as sort of a, a, a pickup metaverse. Um, 
there's a lot of stuff going on there. People getting married, people having sex, like it's pretty crazy. But <laughs> there's also there's also a lot of artists who went to this metaverse. Now the problem obviously is it's a centralized um, thing where everything that you create is actually owned by Linden Labs, the creators of Second Life. Um, so it's not like you're never really going to get anywhere with it. One of the things when I was talking to Clara, the, the girl who is also um, one of the council members of this of my DAO, uh, is the fact that in um, the metaverse, in the Web3 metaverses like um, uh, CryptoVoxels, which, you know, I'm, I, I'm a pretty big part of, and um, all of the uh, uh, metaverse is built on a near um, protocol like near hub 3xm there's no um live performers like in uh second life there were a lot of people who would make an avatar um create a stage start singing um via stream with their avatar playing the guitar or whatever and um you could go and watch these live performances and it was pretty cool like i mean people were even like making plays where they would you know read their lines or whatever it was it was uh pretty amazing um and i was you know talking to clara and saying you know i i wonder why don't they have this in web3 i mean web3 is still a lot slower i mean second life is pretty sophisticated but they do have streaming and stuff like that so um I started thinking about, uh, like, we had a, a performance group in Second Life called Drum, capital D, R, U, capital D, capital R, top, capital U, capital M, um, where we would play. Uh, I, I kind of created uh, this group. Um, I made all these sound loops. Uh, we built these instruments. Um, I actually learned how to code in Second Life. I don't know how to code anywhere else, but uh, and, and uh, you know, we programmed these drums and we could play live in Second Life, not just streaming, but like actually live improvised performances. And I've been wanting to do that in Web3 for a long time. Um, I don't know if um, that is viable yet, but I'm pretty sure that um, live performances via streaming is so I, you know, I was talking to Claire and I said, I really want to start this DAO, um, which is called LP DAO, Live Performers, Live Performance DAO. Um, there are a lot of other DAOs in, um, in the ecosystem that are like, there's a, 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 a burlesque DAO where they have comedians and, and um, dancers and singers. And there's, a, there's a, a writing and poetry DAO. There's an actor's one. So I was thinking it would be really cool to have this, um, you know, like get these people from these other DAOs and actually have performances in CryptoVoxels and um, uh, Near Hub and, you know, maybe one time in Decentraland, but for now, uh, those two for sure, um, where they could have, you know, performing music, uh, singing, dancing, poetry readings, comedy, um, little plays and things like that. And, and, and sort of like encourage this interaction between the different communities, the different DAOs that are already exist, but have them actually perform not only live in the metaverse, but maybe even live wherever they are. So, you know, you would, they, you know, if there's somebody in um, Goa, there's a Goa DAO, and they're doing a dance thing that that could be performed in um, crypto voxels, you know, either on a screen or using avatars or whatever. And I just really like the idea because I don't think it's been done. And, you know, you could call it performance three uh, where, um, you know, everybody who performs gets financially compensated for their performances. Um, uh, it's a really great way to onboard new people 
into the Web3 space. I mean, you know, now that the um, uh, pandemic is almost over or whatever, uh, a lot of live performers are going back to performing live, but a lot of them weren't able to do that for a long time. And um, I just think it's a really great way uh, to bring that um, live idea into the metaverse and still be live and still like, you know, a lot of people uh, are hesitant about the metaverse that you're going to forget about real life and just be glued to your computer and stuff like that. But it's kind of, I, I, I think it's more like the idea of bringing um, real life into the metaverse. And one of the things that I really like about the metaverse um, is how many people you can meet, how many um, people from all over the world. I mean, I have friends from all over the world. Uh, some of them I've never met before. Some of them I met for the first time last summer when I went to Europe. Um, but it, it, it's just it's just amazing at the relationships that you can create. Um, I, I find that uh, the metaverse in particular, and now the Web3 metaverse is a really liberating thing in a lot of ways, um, because I would never have met any of these people if it wasn't for the computer and what you can do on the internet now and what you can do in Web3. Um, so that's basically my, my um, main goal is to sort of take all of these uh, live artists um, from all these other DAOs, integrate them, to give them a platform to actually perform where people can see um, their work, be it uh, comedy or, or a play or um, singing or dancing or whatever. So one of the things that uh, the way we're going to kick this off, we haven't actually started. I, I had gone through a bunch of stuff that I wasn't able to do very much, um, uh, but we're getting going now. Um, we're still waiting on our, our branding and, and our logo. Um, uh, but we, we want to have a thing called the Metaverse has Got Talent, which is based on uh, America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent. Um, I think it would be a really cool way to bring people in and have this contest and um, you know have judges and engage as many people and interact with as many people as possible and showcase uh, these people that might not have ever had a chance to, you know, some uh, uh, singer in Laos who would never, you know, be heard anywhere all of a sudden has um, the whole world watching them. And I think it's, it's really, um, it'll be really fun and uh, fulfilling at the same time because you're giving these people a chance to um, be seen by the rest of the world and the internet and web three, where you have more control over what's going on is the perfect place for that. You know, who knows, like maybe a star will be born out of this. So that's basically the concept behind uh, LP Dow. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds awesome. Um, I know I know one artist I'd like to introduce you to that has done work in crypto voxels, does performances. That this might be something that could interest her. Um, yeah, I mean, you touched upon it. I, I think the the key thing is we the the metaverse is enabling opportunities for creators, and you can look at it as doom and gloom that, uh, oh, we're going to be all in the metaverse. And it, I don't, you know, it's, I don't like that, but there's also that other way to look at it is it's an opportunity to connect, get your art there. Um, and that's a big, I, I'm just curious. Have you been onboarding people particularly still in web three and, and experiencing crypto, or have you been able to bring people that are outside of the space? And if, if you have, 
what's how have you been able to communicate the vision and onboard them? In terms of um, LP DAO, we haven't started doing that yet because, uh, like I said, I, I went through a bunch of stuff and wasn't able to do anything for a while. And um, now, and, and we're waiting on our branding, and I feel that it's really important to have um, that, uh, um, you know, that branding in place before we start, uh, you know, bringing in more people and, and sharing our vision. But um, I think that is our next step. Um, we got a little bit of a grant from uh, Dow Cubator, uh, which helps new DAOs get started. Um, there's a, oh, no, I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's, it's a, they have a whole system uh, to help onboard people where you uh, help somebody create a near name and give them some near to get started. Um, so there's like this really good infrastructure in the near ecosystem um, to bring in people from, from outside, from uh, who don't know anything about Web3. Now, it's quite interesting because I, you know, I went to art school. I have a lot of artist friends. I don't have any artist friends who are in Web3. I... <laughs> I have talked to them about it. Uh, a lot of them still go on about Bitcoin being a scam and things like that. Um, but I haven't been able to get any uh, artists that I went to school with uh, to come into this space. Um, uh, they, they just seem to be really leery about it. Uh, that's just the visual artists uh, and a lot of the people that I know are doing digital art and stuff like that. So, I mean, time will tell. I, I, I just think that, you know, people hear the word still hear the word Bitcoin and think of drug dealers and, um, uh, you know, dodgy interactions and, and things like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's quite interesting, but no, I haven't, we, like I said, we haven't uh, been able to, um, we haven't started onboarding people, but we are going to be doing that soon. Um, I think we will start, like I said, there are a lot of other DAOs and a lot of those DAOs uh, go out into their communities like Goa DAO, for example, which is based in Goa. They go out and they have events um, where they bring people in. There's a lot of artists there um, uh, that she's been able to, the, the, the girl that Johanga that started Goa Dao, um, has been able to bring them in. Uh, I myself, where I live is basically in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it's not the kind of the thing where I can just go out, um, uh, for the night and, you know, talk, like I don't live, I, you know, I'm from Toronto, but I don't live there anymore. Um, I live out in the country now in British Columbia. Um, so for me, the best way to get um, to onboard people is through the internet still and through all these other DAOs. Great, no, thank, uh, great insight. Also great, I mean, the vision's great too. Please keep us updated. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll make sure to connect you with one of these artists that I know um, and, and best of luck with, with LP Dow. And as we get to the, to the end of the interview, I want to be conscious of everyone's time. I do have a couple of questions, two more questions. And, and the, the one that I think would be great value is if you can just talk about in, in, in very quick, as, as quick as you can, but still get us the details is how to stay safe in this space and not get scammed. Cause I know you got scammed and it's, it was sad. I remember you telling me, now, I, I think creatives, people that are new to the space, we need to be aware of these scams because that's what's hurting the reputation of this space as well, is all these scams. So if you can just give us some advice, what to watch out for, that'd be great. Yeah, I got scammed. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty cautious about that kind of stuff. I usually, you know, like... I don't answer unsolicited. Now I'm getting these things on Twitter about, 
here's my wallet address, blah, blah, blah. I don't even, like, I just delete them. So, like, I'm not somebody who falls for this kind of stuff very easily. But um, I was actually uh, putting up a show for Ina Dow, and everything was running really slowly. Like, my wallet wasn't working really well. I was having a lot of problems. So I, I went on um, a forum on Telegram, uh, which is actually a, you know, it has a little check mark. It was all an above board forum. And all I wanted to do was ask if there was some kind of a problem um, going on. And there were two moderators in this forum. And, you know, one of them messaged me. And I didn't think anything of it because I went out and asked for help. And they said, oh, you know, and I said, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm trying to do this and everything's running slow. Is there some kind of a problem? Uh, and he said, uh, yeah, well, you know, I've been talking to the tech people, blah, blah, blah. And um, it has something to do with syncing. And I went, oh, okay. Uh, and he said, well, you know, like, just um, I'm going to give you this link. Uh, just follow the instructions and it will resync your wallet. And because I'm the one that went looking for the help, this person was, you know, their profile was exactly, you know, the moderator. It said moderator. They were in the group acting like a moderator. Um, so I believe them. Uh, I went to the site. It asked me to put my passphrase in. And again, that is the number one rule is never give anybody your passphrase. Um, but I wasn't giving anybody, I was asking for help and I was having a problem with my wallet. So I put in the passphrase. I had um, the Eno wallet, which hardly had any money in it. And I tried it and it said it failed. And then the guy said, oh, do you have, you know, I don't know what's going on. Do you have another wallet? So I put in my wallet, um, my, my near wallet. And that didn't work. And he goes, well, that's really weird. Uh, do you have a MetaMask thing? So I, I stupidly, I, you know, by this point, I should have realized. But I put in my MetaMask wallet. Um, in the end, I, at the time, it was, I basically lost about $12,000 worth of coins. But it wasn't just that. It was all of my artwork. Um, now this person owned all of my artwork. Uh, that I created, uh, still owns it. Um, all of my um, uh, stuff that I bought, I was like, I, I, I messaged my son because all of a sudden I realized what was going on. And um, I, I went into the, the, the group the group chat and I said, these guys are, are thieves, watch out. And, and I got booted out of the group chat. Um, and then I wrote this whole big thing on the near forum. And then the person that I was accusing of stealing my money came and said, this is me and I didn't steal any of your money. And I looked at their, I looked at their profiles and they were exactly the same as the guy who actually stole all of my money and my, my artwork and stuff like that. And, you know, it was, it was easier on near because I, I uh, canceled my passphrase uh, and you can change your passphrase on near. And I'll get to that point in a minute. Um, but on my MetaMask wallet, I had, you know, it, it's connected to all of my artwork. I was taking my artwork, you know, my son was like, you, you've got to get it out of there quickly because the guy was like, you know, stealing it. Like as I was like, and I put money in, like, you know, you have to have uh, Ethereum in your wallet in order to actually move the stuff. And every half the time when I put money in the Ethereum wallet, he would take it out. So it was like this, I had to be really fast and I got most of my stuff back. Um, but a lot of the stuff that I had made myself, he now has it. Um, unfortunately, I did not know this at the time because I had changed my um, passphrase on my near uh, wallet. Um, but there's something like I, you know, I know enough about computers to get by, but uh, something CLI, and he had made a whole bunch of passphrases. So I'd saved up another $2,000. And he just stole that like the other day. So now I have a new wallet. I'm still, um, I've had to burn all of my tokens that I made on my Ethereum wallet. And I have to like, and that's like, it's already cost me like $600 just to burn and re mint the tokens. And I'm still 
you know, with everything else that's going on right now, I'm still behind in, in like recreating my artwork. So it, it's just, it's just been a headache. So yes, number one, my son is like, why did you give them your passphrase? And I said, I didn't give the, I was looking for help. I didn't give them my passphrase. He was helping me. He told me to like, to fix my wallet. I had to do this. And you know, uh, I don't get fooled very easily. And I just like, I'm annoyed. Um, I'm annoyed at this person. Uh, like it, it, it's just, uh, especially with, you know, all of the art that I had and, you know, the stuff that I had, it, it's just been a nightmare. So, um, but it's a very expense, expensive lesson to be learned. Um, a lot of people, like even Connie Digital, who's you know a pretty big name in, in the music uh, aspect of, of um, um, crypto art, has had it happen. It, it's very, um, and they're, they're just getting more and more sophisticated. I mean, obviously nobody's going to, or nobody should respond to unsolicited things, you know, people email me go oh i really like your work and um i want you to do this thing for me and you know and it always turns out to be a scam so you never know you just never give anybody your passphrase don't even give them the passphrase like always question everything is like you want to be in charge of your own um finances in crypto which is what you know it's like i can't call the police i can't go to my bank it's you know i'm the one that's in charge of it um you just have to be extra vigilant and, um, you know, things are going to happen and, you know, no matter how hard you try, but, uh, that's my sad story. <laughs> just, just a quick comment. I, I'm, I'm happy that this story did not stop you to pursue your, your mission. So that's, uh, that's really nice to see that you still continue. And yeah, what, what happened with you could have happened with any of us. And I, this is what I used to say to people that um, on Web3, we have to be very careful. careful uh, there are a uh, few trustable projects and places to 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 go at this point to get help and discord is not one of that places um for instance in purple creator like uh, security trust is like our number one priority uh we take very serious uh to that so we are that's what we are trying to build a safe community because we believe that unless we get to at this point uh, because I, I, I don't feel like uh, as many other projects, they just say, well, you, you are the owner of your wallet, the problem is yours. No, I think the projects, they should be designed uh, for trust. They should be designed to help people to manage their own capital. And um, yeah, unfortunately, we are still in the early stages of the, the technology, but, um, but I would advise people as well to uh, double check the, 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 the security of the community and the projects that you are involved with. It's sort of like the Wild West, really. Uh, the whole Web3 in, in NFTs in particular is like the Wild West. There's no rules. I mean, governments around the world are still trying to figure out how to control it. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's great if you are that kind of person who wants to be in control of their life and their money and, you know, and, and like it's up to you. It's, it, it's the same thing in, in terms of, selling yourself like nobody's going to sell me i have to sell myself um i have to take care of my own wallet i have to make sure nobody's going to steal and and like even platforms like um i don't know if you know about roll which is a they they create social tokens which is where our, yep. our we made our social token for our film well they got hacked you know it's like even even um exchanges get hacked all the time like 
it's the wild there's really great things i mean i'd rather be in the wild west and and um you know have my freedom and 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 be able to have control over what i'm doing and what i want to do and how i want to express myself than you know be in somewhere safe and that's it comes along with it it's not only these really great things there's a lot of really nasty um greedy people out there who will you know do anything to get you know i just sit there and go oh i did all this work and i've worked really hard and i worked really hard to get that two thousand dollars for that month and all of a sudden this i'm not even gonna say the word this <laughs> horrible person um when it's stolen again, it's like, how dare they? They're just sitting at their computer and I'm like imagining some teenage kid laughing his head off or whatever. I don't know. It's like, I just, I don't wish them well. That's all I have to say about it. Well, sorry to hear it. Um, like Andre and, and, and you mentioned, Krista, you got to be careful out there. Do your research. Don't trust don't ever give your wallet out, uh, your pat, the passphrase, and just be extra vigilant. Um, so as we as we wrap up, I do want to ask one my, uh, little question for you, and that is just if you can give us in a sentence or two, how has this space changed? Or no, no, biggest lesson learned in this space as we as we get to the finale. A sentence or two. I'm really bad at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it is just um, interact, find your tribe, um, join in, um, uh, give what you can, um, create, and and just keep going. Um, and yeah, that's it. I would say. I hope that's not a, a, a anti climax to your. <laughs> no, a, you, you've spoken. You have you've said a lot of good stuff, um, Andre. Before we wrap up, anything you want to say? Yeah, I just want to thank you for your time to share uh, a little bit of your amazing project and some some advice for our community. Thank you very much. Likewise, thank hey. you. Thank you very much, Krista, for coming on and, and sharing your wisdom. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. It was really great talking with you. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm better behind the camera. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> we flipped it. We flipped the switch. Well, take care. Take Thank care, you everybody everyone. who's Thank been you. watching. And Thank you, guys. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you.